Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. Most dentists use the patient's centric occlusion as a reference position for doing amalgam, acrylic, or gold restorations. Although centric occlusion is probably the most important position in the dentulous patient, there are other reference positions that are important for restorative dentistry and treatment for temporomandibular muscle pain dysfunction, traumatic occlusion, or bruxism. The most common reference position, other than centric occlusion, is called centric relation. Centric relation is a jaw-to-jaw -jaw position, not a tooth-to-tooth -tooth position. Centric relation is commonly defined as that position when the mandibular condyles are seated in the uppermost and rearmost position of the glenoid fossa. This close-up view of the dried skull shows the position of the mandibular condyle seated in the glenoid fossa with the teeth in centric occlusion. Note the relationship of the condylar articulation with the auditory canal. The posterior wall of the glenoid fossa is approximately four millimeters anterior to the canal. The position of the mandibular condyle will be examined cinefluorographically in centric relation and sliding into centric occlusion. The auditory canal is an easy landmark to locate on the cinefluorograph and can be used to orient yourself to the condylar articulation. The white oval spot on the radiograph is the auditory canal, which is located three to four millimeters posterior to the condylar articulation. The joint space is a light gray area on the radiograph and separates the dark gray bones of the condylar articulation. The mandible will be placed in centric relation and arced closed until the first tooth contact is made. This tooth position is called CRC or centric relation contact. From CRC the mandible will be squeezed shut into centric occlusion. The movement of the condyle should be noted from CRC to centric occlusion. In CRC, the condyle is located more posteriorly and inferiorly in the glenoid fossa than in centric occlusion. A small movement of the condyle can result in a large discrepancy between CRC and CO. The wide view will demonstrate the slide in centric from CRC to centric occlusion. For orientation, the auditory canal is first observed. Then the condylar articulation. The posterior teeth are in the lower right-hand position of the cinefluorograph. The mandible is first positioned in CRC. Notice that the teeth are slightly apart. Watch the teeth shift into better interdigitation as the mandible is closed into centric occlusion. Watch the teeth shift from CRC to CO one more time. As the teeth close from CRC to CO the third time, try to watch the corresponding change that occurs in the temporomandibular joint. The entire sequence will be repeated one more time. Look first at the teeth. As the teeth start to move, watch the movement in the joint at the same time. This movement will be simulated on your articulated casts. The soft tissues that move after the teeth close into centric occlusion are the soft palate and tongue during swallowing. The articulator can be set to simulate a slide in centric. With the spacer in position, the condylar stop should be aligned with the zero setting of the PR scale. The zero notch on the condylar stop should be aligned with the inclination indicating line. The PR adjustment or protrusive retrusive component of the Hanau articulator can be adjusted to simulate centric relation position on the articulated cast. The first step in the procedure for changing the PR adjustment is to release the thumb screw 
on the back side of the condylar post and set the lateral condylar angulation to zero degrees. Next, loosen the thumb screw on the inner surface of the condylar guidance. Also, loosen the centric lock so that the condylar element can be moved away from the condylar stop. Now, remove the centric stop thumb screw along with the cylindrical spacer. Remove the spacer from the thumb screw and be careful not to lose it. It is a good idea to tie the spacer to the condylar post. Replace the centric stop thumb screw and return to the zero position on the PR scale. Now continue one full turn which will position the centric stop one millimeter forward. Hold the centric stop thumb screw in position and tighten the thumb screw on the inner surface of the condylar guidance. Bring the condylar element forward until it contacts the centric stop and tighten the condylar lock. Repeat the procedure on the opposite side of the articulator. When completed, the mandibular cast will now be positioned more posteriorly in relation to the maxillary cast. Before checking CR contacts, review the functional contacts on the molar, cuspid, and central incisor. The position of the centric stops and non-supporting cusp contacts should be noted. Close the articulator with the condylar elements locked in the retrusive position. Premature tooth contacts prevent the cast from closing intracentric occlusion as demonstrated by the incisal pin not contacting the incisal table. Check the tooth contacts on the first molar after closing the articulator in the simulated centric relation position. The only dull areas on the zinc stearate are those made by the original centric occlusion stops. If additional marks had been present, they would be considered prematurities in centric relation. The wax would then be carved away to eliminate the prematurities. The contacts on the cuspid and central incisor also look the same. Since the mandible moves backwards from centric occlusion to centric relation, there are seldom premature contacts on the anterior teeth in centric relation. Check with blue articulating paper to determine which teeth are contacting prematurely in centric relation. The pressure from the inked paper setting on the teeth will mark some cusp tips and other elevated tooth parts that are not actual contacts with the opposing teeth. The darkest areas are the actual contacts. Notice the dark blue mark with a light center on the second bicuspid. This mark indicates the first tooth contact when the mandible is closed with the condyles in centric relation. CR prematurities are commonly seen on the lingual cusps of maxillary bicuspids. Close the articulator and check with shim stock to verify which teeth are contacting prematurely in centric relation closure. The shim stock slides easily between the molars. but catches between the second bicuspids. The clinical examination demonstrated a similar contact in centric relation. Notice the position of the centric relation premature contacts on the patient's first and second bicuspids. 
The red mark on the second bicuspid is heaviest and very closely matches the contact on the cast. The marks from the articulating paper cover the wear facets, which are made by the teeth hitting in centric relation and sliding to centric occlusion. The wear facets are proof that CR is a functional position. The slide indicates that an unstable occlusion exists in centric relation. An unstable occlusion in CR may result in mandibular dysfunction, which could cause soreness in the masticatory muscles or the temporomandibular joints. An occlusal adjustment can usually be done to eliminate the premature contacts. Dental restorations should not produce premature contacts in centric relation. The centric occlusion contacts are marked with blue articulating paper. The blue marks are located on the marginal ridges. The overlap of the blue marks on part of the red marks is not indicative of a slide in centric occlusion, but rather points out the close proximity of the cuspal inclines in centric occlusion. Very small contacts on the marginal ridges are sufficient centric occlusion stops to provide a stable occlusion and to maintain contact vertical dimension. Selective grinding could eliminate these contacts without disturbing the stable centric occlusion stops. Check all the teeth with shim stock for contacts in centric relation and then examine the mandibular arch. The mandibular teeth contacting in centric relation are clearly marked with articulating paper. Notice which cusp produced the contacts in CRC. Also notice which part of the cusp is contacting. Loosen the centric locks and check for interfering contacts in working, balancing, and protrusive movements. The centric relation contacts which will result on these casts may not be the same contacts you will find on your cast. Notice the dull spot on the distobuckle cusp. This spot was made during the right working movement. The contact could interfere with smooth mandibular movements or prevent the cuspid from contacting. To prevent a working interference, the wax should be carved until this contact is eliminated. There are no interferences in balancing or protrusion. Checking the left working movement from the centric relation position, a heavy contact between the first molars is now present. This contact is heavier in CR than CO because the mandible has been moved posteriorly. This contact prevents the cuspid from contacting during the left working movement. Notice the cuspids are out of contact. The interference on the molar should be eliminated by selective grinding, which will result in proper anterior tooth guidance during the left working movement. With the condylar locks loosened, it is easy to demonstrate the slide in centric. Hold the condylar elements against the condylar stops and close the articulator until light contact is made between the maxillary and mandibular teeth. Light contact between the maxillary and mandibular teeth has been achieved. After stabilizing the upper member in the CRC position, apply pressure straight downward and watch the teeth slide into centric occlusion. Repeat the procedure several times. Notice the space between the teeth in CRC. 
and the normal interdigitation of the teeth in centric occlusion. When the teeth are in centric occlusion, the condylar elements are approximately one millimeter behind the condylar stops. In centric occlusion, the incisal pin contacts the incisal table. The insert shows the condylar element against the condylar stop in centric relation and the movement of the condylar element during the slide into centric occlusion. The actual slide in centric is demonstrated on the patient. The dentist positions the condyles in centric relation and closes the mandible until the teeth make contact. This is done carefully so the mandible does not move before the dentist can feel and observe the slide. The patient is then instructed to close tightly. The inclined surfaces of the teeth will guide the patient into centric occlusion. The slide in centric will be repeated in slow motion. Notice the space between the right cuspids in centric relation contact. During the slide, the space disappears until the teeth make contact in centric occlusion. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.